hebu tuinuke tumkaribishie mnenaji wa neno atuletee neno na salamu kutoka Suri Canada jina lake ni Chris Karema tumkaribishie ajisikie santi sana Hallelujah I say praise God Praise God in the highest You see the devil has been fighting me, fighting my health all last night this morning but I'm standing before you to declare the word of God. I know somebody is here and is here to hear what God has placed on my heart. Mama helped me and prayed for me while we were in the back. I was like I'm feeling headache. I don't know what's happening to me, but I know when there's a word the enemy tries to fight against it. Oh hallelujah. Because he trying to fight me, I will preach it with all my might. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to salute our bishop, your bishop, my bishop, and the mother in the house. God bless you. I am very 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 honored. Very honored. I was very impressed with the leadership here. Thank you so much. I was sitting here after the Kesha, now I know the word. I was sitting here and I was telling him, "Bishop, there's something that is happening here." And the funny thing enough, I didn't know that I was setting myself in a trap when I was asking him a question. After the all night, that's when he asked me, "Can you speak tomorrow <laughs> in the second service?" I say, "I have to be ready in season and out of season." You may be seated in Jesus' name. Hallelujah! I love Nairobi. I've been enjoying myself. Pastor Dave, thank you so much for taking me around. I enjoy the view, the buildings, and the nice, nice, nice people. Hallelujah! Thank you for all the. the food they've been feeding me like nobody's business here <laughs> i had to go and rebuke the cook i say hey i don't want to leave here in another shape i want to go back to my wife hallelujah like bishop said i want to really appreciate and honor my family i haven't seen my grandmother since i was 5 and my family's here my brother my cousins every single one of them mohaguru ke to begel that was no tongue that was my language hallelujah i am very very honored and blessed to be here mrichard you know my sister say something briefly i was telling her i'm speaking in english she was like oh i'm oh should we come I say yeah of course you can come then she looks at me say once in a while you can throw some of our language <laughs> words and some people will think you're speaking in tongues <laughs> but I am here this year is a year of restoration and demonstration what a powerful word for this year if we are going to enter into this year of restoration and demonstration we need to pray and push through I want to bring you my greetings from my church Calvary Worship Center my pastor Semo Wusu my pastor Chris Komago my pastor Ziga my pastor Roseman my pastor Frank they all greet you in the name of Jesus hallelujah i was here for 2 weeks in Uganda and god did tremendous 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 work so that's why i chose to speak on this word effective prayer look at your neighbor and say effective prayer effective prayer You see if there is an effective prayer it means that there's some prayers that are not effective. If there's a prayers that break through then it means that there's some prayers that are just lingering in the air. Some people pray and don't get answered. Some people pray some powerful prayer and we're going to be looking at that in the book of James. Please turn your Bibles to the book of James chapter 5 verse 13 to 18. The book of James chapter 5 13 to 18 if you're there say amen amen you guys are bible students so you should be there hallelujah is right after the hebrews james 5 13 to 18 the bible say is anyone among you in trouble let them what pray is anyone happy let them sing songs or praise is anyone among you sick let them call the elders of the church to what to pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord and their prayer offered in what in faith our pastor this morning if you're not here he spoke on faith that it is impossible to please God even to touch the heart of God will make the sick person well 
the law will raise them up. If they have sinned, they will be forgiven. Verse 16, therefore confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous man is powerful. Somebody say powerful. Hallelujah. It's powerful and effective. Elijah was a human being. Elijah was a human being. He had two eyes, two ears, feet. He walked. He was tired. He slept. He was weak. He was a man just like you and I. This, look at your neighbor and say, Elijah was just like you. It, Elijah was the same thing as you. The Bible says he was a human being. Even as we are, he prayed earnestly. Hallelujah. That it would not rain and it did not rain on the land for three and a half years. Again, he prayed and the heavens gave rain and the earth produced its crops. Amen. This morning, I'm going to dissect this passage for us. If we are going to do exploits in this year without any apology to the enemy, we need to pray powerfully. We need to pray prayers that touches the heart of God. Amen. Do I get an amen in the back? Hallelujah. Some of you are hiding, but I'll come to you. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. So effective prayer. I'll look at the definition. I'll look at the means of an effective prayer. And then I'll end with the benefit of effective prayer. Not just some prayer, but effective prayer. Let's look at the definition. An effective prayer is a kind of prayer that brings out results. It is not a prayer, it's a prayer that you made with confidence that something will come out of it. Hallelujah. It is a prayer of expectancy. Expectancy. But it has to be based on God's word. It has to be based on God's promises. And it has to be based on God's character. Is an is, is a, a prayer of expectancy based on God's word, promises, and character. Why? Because there are people praying prayers, but they are wasting time. They are praying prayers that do not align with the word of God. They are praying prayers if you ask them, where is this found in the Bible? They can't tell you. They don't know. There are people praying prayers that are against the promises of God. There are people praying against God's character. I can speak to some young men here. You are praying for God to touch that unsaved sister. That the Lord will bring and woof them towards you. God forbid. I'm here to tell you. The Bible says that you cannot be unequally yoked. In other words, if you are praying that prayer that God will save that girl. It's okay to pray for her to be saved. But it's not okay for you to pray for her so that you can be with her. Am I speaking something here? Based on God's word promises and character hallelujah hallelujah let's look at the first one the bible says it's earnest prayer an effective prayer is an earnest prayer look back in in james 5 16 the effective fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much <laughs> you see a prayerless christian is a powerless believer a prayerless Christian is a powerless because you have opened yourself up to all kinds of things to hit you. Am I speaking to somebody? First, you let one thing to enter. You give the enemy a toehold, a foothold. Next thing you know, the enemy has had a, a stronghold into your life. But I'm here to tell you, we need to go back into prayer and ask God to touch us. In the Greek, the word effective, as you can see, it means to be active. Hallelujah. Or to be efficient. And fervent has the implication of heat or zeal. So my definition goes like this. An effective prayer is effective and is active. It is efficient. It is fervent. And it is a heated and zealous prayer. We're here on Acacia. Your pastor was speaking something powerful. If you miss, you missed Hallelujah. If you miss, you miss. He said three things. You have to accept that you have a problem. You have to acknowledge the fact that you have a problem. And you have to act. So an effective prayer adds to that. There's an action required on you. The Bible says you ask, you shall receive. 
Seek and you shall find. You notice there is a level to it. And the Bible says, knock and the door shall be opened unto you. Why? Because God is a good father. And he wants to see how serious are you about the question or the thing you're asking. How serious are you? Ernest, Elijah prayed earnestly. Effective prayer. Thank you. I really needed that. An effective prayer is earnest prayer and it is a heartfelt prayer. It is a prayer that comes from deep within your heart. Some people pray these mambo jumbo prayers. They're just speaking with their mouth but the words are not coming deep inside their heart. God, the Bible said that God looks at the heart of man and he knows exactly what you want. Some, you know, sometimes we think that we can trick God into blessing us. Oh, if I say these words, even though I don't, I don't mean in my heart, God will just answer it. God is not a witch doctor <laughs> that he doesn't know anything. He just do whatever you ask. I am here to encourage you. An effective prayer has to be coming from the heart. And I'll show you some examples in a second. And the third thing, an effective prayer is a continual prayer. You don't stop. You continue pressing. Look at this, James 5, 18 says, Again he prayed, and the heavens gave rain, and the earth produced its crops. If you go back in First King and read the story, you see sometimes we read these stories, we're like, oh, Elijah just prayed again, and it happened. But the Bible says he prayed once, he prayed twice, he prayed three times, he prayed four times, he prayed five times, he prayed six times. And the seven times, the Bible said there was a cloud like a hand that was rising from the sea, and the rain was coming. An earnest prayer is a continual prayer. If you are serious about that thing, you will pray again. I'm here to remind somebody, if you have prayed about something and it has not come to pass, and you know it's according to God's word, according to God's character, I am here to tell you and remind you, go back and check your notes and say, God, this is according to your word. Lord, I know that your word is yea and amen. You have never failed. You hear my cry. When I call unto you, my God, you will hear me. The Bible says, if you are good fathers and know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will God give the Holy Spirit or anything that you ask that is according to his will? Am I helping somebody this morning? Hallelujah. It is a continual prayer. The Bible says pray with our season. How serious are you about whatever you're asking God? Effective prayer. If you, every man and woman in the Bible who prayed about something and came to pass, they had some fervency, some zealous. God I, am, I need help from above. This thing, this thing can only be answered by you. I need a miracle. I need a touch from heaven. Some of us, we have never experienced miracles because all we want is the simple, simple things. We want this small, small, small little thing. We don't want to push. God is not afraid. God it can do anything whenever, however he wants. Hallelujah. Continue prayer. Look at 1 Samuel 1, 12 to 15. This is the story of Akana and Hannah. The Bible says, as she kept on what? On praying. The word, they say, kept on what? On praying to the Lord. Eli observed her mouth. Hallelujah. Just a quick story before that. Hannah visited the temple every single year. Every single year she prayed. Every single year. She, God, give me children. God, give me a son. God, give me a son. But it came to a time. One day she entered the temple. The Bible says Hannah was praying in where? In her heart. You see, sometimes we think the more we shout is, is the more that God hears us. It's like the story that was told by two children. They, they, they wanted a toy and they began to, one of them said, you know what? We should pray aloud. Maybe so grandma can hear us because grandma is going deaf. So when grandma hears us, then grandma will answer. Some of us, that's how we, we are. We take God as grandma with the ear edge and they, they, they're going faulty. So like the more we shout, it's not about the shouting. It's about what's coming in your heart. The Bible said she prayed in her heart and her lips were moving, but her voice was no heard. Eli thought she was drunk. She was desperate. She was desperate. She lied at the altar and she was praying. Eli thought she was drunk and said to her, how long 
are you going to stay drunk? Put away your wine. Not so, my Lord, she answered. Hallelujah. I am a woman who's what? Deeply troubled. Deeply troubled. I am troubled. I need God to restore me. I need God to show his power in 2020. I am not going to leave this temple until I hear from God. How when was the last time that you stayed and tarried before God? Say, God, until you speak, I will not walk out of here. Until you speak, until you send a word, until you minister to me. God, I am not moving. That was her attitude, deep from the heart. Not so, my Lord. I am a woman who's deeply troubled. I have not been drinking wine or beer. I was pouring out my soul unto the Lord. Some of us, we pour our soul to men. We pour our soul to our friends. We pour our soul to every other thing but God. But the one who has created you. But the one who's able to help you. Do you know some people, you tell some of the things, it becomes a gossip thing. <laughs> They begin to, oh, they begin to share as a prayer request. That's how it starts. Oh, did you hear Brother David? Uh, my uh, sister, this and this has been going through this. And then they'll end with, let's pray about it. Let's pray with her. But uh, most of them, they say, I'll pray for you. And they don't pray for you. I am here to tell you there is a God who cares for you. There is a God who is there to answer your questions. There is a God who is able to heal you. There is a God who is able to deliver you. There is a God out there who cares just for you. You know what's the funny thing? God wants to hear from you. And he's so excited to speak back to you. That is the God that we serve. Hallelujah. Look at this quote. I love this. It says, if you only pray when you're in trouble. You are in trouble. Look at your neighbor and say, if you only pray when you're in trouble, <laughs> you are definitely in trouble. <laughs> because a prayer that are powerful, they are added day after day, month after month, week after month. They are seeking God. Lord, restore me. Lord, strengthen me. Lord, be with me. Lord, I am coming again and again and again until you touch my life. The second thing, let's look at the means of effective prayer. What are some things that we can, we, can, we, can, we can make sure that our lives, we are living right. So that when we stand before God, we are not accused by the enemy. The Bible says that the devil is a liar. How many of you, you see sometimes people come to church, they want to sit in the back. Because, you know, the, the devil is whispering a few words. Hey, you're a sinner. Remember, you and me were just chilling at the bar yesterday. We're dancing. Zugu, zugu, zugu. Hallelujah. And the enemy is able to corner you and push you against the wall. But I'm here to tell you, he is a liar. There is a God who died for you. And today, I pray that you will receive him. And that he may give you that deliverance. Because the Bible says that whoever the son shall set free. You know it. Preach it with me. Hallelujah. Number one, it is the prayer of a righteous person. One of the means is a, is a prayer of a righteous person. See, sometimes we look at the word righteous. We get so confused. Like, oh, I am not righteous. Look at me. I'm filthy. It is not about your righteousness. I am here to tell you that Jesus died on your behalf. The word righteousness simply means it being in the right standing with God. It doesn't mean you have to be spotless. It doesn't mean that you, you are sinless. But it is a person who realizes that they are wretched. And they need Christ to impute his righteousness upon us. So when we stand in the presence of God, when God looks at you, he's not looking at you just straight. He's looking through Jesus Christ and he sees you and he sees you and he sees the few people in the balcony. So remember that the enemy is a liar and his job is to make sure that you are not set free. His job is to make sure that you are, you are held against the wall. But the Bible says nothing can stop you if you know who you are in Christ Jesus. You are the righteousness of God Jesus. Hallelujah. Say so the effective fervent prayer, that's verse 16, it, of a righteous man avails much. Look at Psalms 66 verse 18. Psalm 16, 66 
verse 18. The Bible says, if I regard iniquity in my heart. Realize that he said, if I regard. So you can choose to decide not to give your sins to God. So the enemy can, can convince you that you are not capable of doing so. But the Bible says, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the law will not hear me. If I regard iniquity in my heart, then the law will not hear me. So you are standing between, be, be, between God doing the next thing in your life. If you do not decide to confess and bring it to him. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the law will not hear me. That is the first thing we realize. Look at Isaiah 59 verse 2. The Bible says, but your iniquity have separated you from your God. Your sins have hidden his face from you so that he will not hear. Again there, you hear that. It is a, an effective prayer. It is a prayer prayed by a righteous person. It is a person who knows who they are in Christ. Who they know what the power of God that rests in them. The Bible says that greater is he that is in you than he who is in the word. All of them put together. Hallelujah to the glory of Jesus. Hallelujah. So you have power to overcome. My goodness, if Jesus was able to leave the grave, I pray that somebody this morning, you'll be able to walk out of this place and leave everything behind. Because it is, be it is you who's standing between you and God. He said, your sins have separated you from God. But why should you live like that when Christ died? He paid the ultimate sacrifice for you so you can be liberated. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look at Psalms 32 verse 5. I like to go with scriptures so that when you go, you don't think I'm making things up. Hallelujah. <laughs> Write it down. Check it out. So that when you are praying, you are remembering this year. Go back and check and listen. Say, God. This is what was spoken. The prayer of a righteous person. A, B, C, D. Hallelujah. So it says verse 5, I acknowledge. So how do we do it this morning? I acknowledge. The same thing uh, Bishop was saying. You have to acknowledge that you have a problem. You can't be saved unless you know that you are, you are, you are in trouble. You can't be rescued if you can't be rescued if you don't know that you are a slave. But when you realize that you are in trouble, you are to call God and acknowledge Say, God, I have a problem and I need a touch from above. I need a touch. Acknowledge your sin. God is waiting for you to speak. You see, God knows your heart. But he's also waiting for you to confess. He's waiting for you to acknowledge. Because God is not, is, 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 is not some force that will force itself on you to try to overtake it. The Bible says that God has given us free will. Free will. And this morning, you need to be set free by acknowledging your sin unto God and my iniquity have not hid this is David say my iniquity I have no hid now that you wonder why God called David a man after his heart David was the worst of worse you want some of the things that, that David did David took another man's wife David he killed that man David he did all kinds of different things but the Bible say over and over and over and over again David came back to God. Say, God, I have sinned. I am here. But that should not be your license to just go and sin. It's like, I'll just come back to God. You cannot fool God. Amen? I know some of you, that, that was some of my thoughts. It's like, you know what? Since now I have a license, it's grace. I'll just walk into it. I'll go and party and then come back and praise God. God will hear me. God, God is not a man. We should learn to fear God. The cause of your sin, it costs Jesus. Everything, his own life. Hallelujah. Look at this quote by Rick Warren. I believe this will help somebody. This one, he said, God can handle your doubt. God can handle your anger. God can handle your grief. God can handle your confusion. God can handle your questions. He can. He can. And he's asking you to come and ask. Come to him. Come. Come. That's why he's crying right now. Come. Come. Let's reason. You can bring everything to him in prayer. Hallelujah. And you will be for sure healed and saved and cleansed. Hallelujah. The prayer of a righteous person. Number two, it is the prayer of faith. The Bible says without faith, it is impossible to please God. Hallelujah. 
Look at this quote. Say, faith honors God. And God honors faith. I'll repeat it. Faith honors God. And God honors faith. Let's go into scriptures. James 5, 15. The Bible says, and the prayer offered in faith will make the person, the, the sick person well. The Lord will raise them up. If they have sinned, they will be forgiven. A prayer made in faith. Look at this, James 1, 6 and 5 and to 8. It says, but let him ask in what? In faith. Nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like the wave of the sea, driven with the wind and post. For let not that man, do you have the scripture? I want everybody to see the red part. You see, do you have it? It says, for let not that man think that he shall receive anything. By anything, it means anything. If you are praying God, and you are double-minded, you are thinking A, B, C, D. Oh, maybe God will answer. Maybe God will do this. Maybe God will... That, that means you have no faith. You are wavering back and forth, tossed by the wind. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. In all his ways. Not some, but all. If you have no faith about what you're asking for, forget about it. Just put that one on the side until you have faith to pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because we have to approach God believing that he is, and that he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Diligently. The third thing, I say the prayer of a righteous person, the prayer of faith, praying in the will of God. The third thing is praying in the will of God. It is confirmed in 1 John 5, 14 to 15. 1 John 5, 14, 15. The Bible says, this is the confidence that we have in approaching God. That if we ask anything, remember that a double-minded man can receive nothing. But if you approach God in faith, the Bible says that if we ask anything according to his will, his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, look at your neighbor and say, whatever you ask. If it's according to God, whatever you ask. You see, some people pray prayers because they want to please the people around them. Elijah only prayed against the rain. He was doing it for God. So when you're praying, I'll get to there to James. I'm getting ahead of myself. Hallelujah. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petition that we have asked for. The fourth thing, you have to pray definitely. Going back to Bishop is... Uh, Keisha, he say you have to accept, you have to acknowledge, and then you have to act. In other words, you have to write it down. You have to see it. You have to understand it. So that when you stand before God, present your case. God, this, this and this is what I'm going through. Hallelujah. Look at this. The Bible said that in the book of Daniel, 9 verse 2 to 3. In the first year of his Darius' reign, I, Daniel, understood from the scripture. Talking about the will of God. He understood from the scripture. According to the word of Jeremiah, the prophet, that the desolation of Jerusalem will last 70 years. So I turned to the law according to his will. And pleaded with him in prayer and petition, in fasting, in sackcloth and ashes. Hallelujah. I went and pleaded before him. I knew that God's people were supposed to be deliberated. Some of you here, you, hear, you, are, you are here under the sound of my voice. I'm here to tell you, you have been set free. And that is a word that you can take before God. Say, God, although you have set me free, there's something inside of me that I'm still feeling bound. I'm still feeling A, B, C, D. I don't want it in my life anymore. This is your word. You have delivered me. You have set me free. You, oh God, have brought me out of the darkness into your marvelous light. Why am I still feeling the darkness? Why am I still feeling the oppression over, my, over, over me and my family? Why? We have to, as soon as you understand that it's according to the will of God, 
there's nothing that God can withhold. Hallelujah. Look at Isaiah 55, 10, 11. The Bible says, as the rain and snow come down from heaven. Some of you don't understand snow. I'm from Canada. We understand snow very, very well because it snows. Here's one thing I've observed about snow. When it snows, it does not linger in the air. Bishop, it touches the ground. Matter of fact, when you open your door, depending where you live in Canada, you can't even push the door open. <laughs> Hallelujah. You have to press through to get it because the snow has touched the ground. You have rain. Have you seen rain fall and then just remain in the air? It's like, you know what? I will just stay here for a bit. <laughs> I will relax here. No, the rain must touch the ground. So is the word of God. When the word of God has come, it must touch down. It must touch the root of your problem. It must go deep inside of you and bring transformation. Uh, hallelujah. Let's give a hand unto Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's look now at the benefit. This is an ex exciting part for me. The benefit of effective prayer. Why you should, you should start praying deeper. Why you should start going stronger. Why you should continue and believe in God for what, what's going. Some of you have not received some of the prayers you prayed since 2010. And you think it's okay. And you think it's okay. The, enemy, the Bible said the enemy comes to kill, to steal, and to destroy. All his job is to bring forgetfulness into your mind. Bring forget, forgetfulness. So you must write it down. So remind God. God, I'm coming before you again. Let's look at the benefit. Three things I want to share with you. The first one, effective prayer establishes a relationship with God. Why? Because effective prayer is a heartfelt it's a prayer that is coming from deep. It is a sincere prayer. How many of you have enemies for friends or close or best friends? You know somebody is your enemy, but you make them your close friend. Nobody. The same thing with God. When you approach God and you open up to him, you are sincere. You are you're building relationship with him. That is strong. That is very, very strong. Some of our close friends, our wives, the people that we have around, they are people that we trust and we tell deep things that not even some of our best friends or some of them, they don't know. We have established a deeper relationship with God. So what an effective prayer does, because you are pouring your heart to God, you are opening up your heart. Just like David, God will watch over you and he will establish. And when you are with God, nothing, nothing, I said nothing can defeat you. If God be for me, who can stand against me if Jehovah God is walking behind me my goodness you bring whatever you want nothing will stand against me you see sometimes we fear we cry because we don't know that he that is with us establishes a relationship with God number two effective prayer reveals your God given dream he reveals his will he revealed his will. Why effective prayer? Listen to this. Because when you are praying effectively, you are coming to know God. And when you know God, you begin to love him. When you love him, you become like him. All of a sudden, the people that saw you say, ah, brother, something has changed about you. You are resembling somebody else that we don't know. Because you are now walking with God. You know God through that fellowship. That opening up before him. And you begin to love him. Some of us have misconception of who God is. Because we don't know who he is. But when you know God, you begin to love him. When you love him, you, 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 you begin to be like him. And when you become like him, that's only when you can discover your purpose in life. Because the Bible says that our lives are hidden in Christ Jesus. You cannot walk in fullness of the calling that God has called you until you have learned to walk with God. Until you have learned to know God. Until you have learned to love Him. Until you have walked with Him step by step. Then God will begin to whisper. Hey, Brother David. A, B, C, D. The Bible said that there was a time that God has something. But then He's like, should I share with my fellow servant Abraham. 
Why? Because Abraham, God knew his heart. That he was going to instruct his children, his children. Can God trust you with anything? Can he? Look at Jeremiah 33 verse 3. The Bible says, call to me and I what? I will answer you. Talking about God that is dying to speak to you. I will answer you and tell you great and unsearchable things. The thing, some of you, you're, you're, you're feeling empty. You have tried business, you have tried AB, you have tried mechanic, you have tried this. And still something inside of you is still missing. And I'm here to tell you, you need to go back to your first love. And love God over again. Go back to prayer. Go back and pour your soul to him. And as you begin to know him, you will love him afresh. As you open his word, you will love him. And as you are loving him, my sister, you are becoming like him. All of a sudden, the word that you read, they are becoming into action. You are walking them. And all of a sudden, God begins to whisper some beautiful things, great things, unsearchable things, things that you have never even imagine. But that can only be when you are close with God. Let's stop faking it. Let's stop coming. Let's stop. Just come. We are praying. Ah, yeah, yeah, we are praying. But, uh, Bishop say we pray. That's why I'm praying. No, let's go deeper. Say, Bishop, I'm standing with you in prayer. Come what may. Bishop, I am with you. I'm praying. Let's actually mean it and do it. And let's watch God restore our church, restore our family, restore our friendship, restore the things all around us. All of a sudden, our lives have been transformed. All of a sudden, our lives have been changed because we have trusted and we have come to God in prayer fervently. Hallelujah. And the last thing, effective prayer positions you to receive God's promises. God's promises are not for everybody. God blesses all people. But the Bible said there's favor. There's favor that it adds to the people that are walking uprightly with him. Can that be you today? You are struggling A, B, C, D only because you are not trusting God to carry you through it. This morning, I want you to go back. Say, God, I want to tarry before you and pray. I want to tarry before you and seek your face. This year of restoration and demonstration. See, some people come every year. There's a new word for the year. And they go, they laugh about it. They write it down. They forget about it. And then they wait for next year. Last year, nothing happened. They didn't even put it into action. They didn't acknowledge it. They didn't go about it to see it coming to pass. So this year, let there be something different. Let there be something extraordinary about us. That when people see us, they say, is this the same person that we saw yesterday? Is this the same person that we saw just the other day? Because the light of God will begin to shine through you as you continue to deepen your relationship with him. Amen. I'll end with this quote. And then I'll ask the bishop if he has something or he can come up. Because I'm done. Hallelujah. Gandhi say, prayer is not just asking. It's not just asking. It is a longing of the soul. It is a daily admission of one's weaknesses. In other words, prayerlessness is a sin. Prayerlessness is a sin. Why? Because when you come to prayer, you are humble in yourself before God. So when you don't pray, you are saying, God, as for this one, I've got it. I know it. I've been there through it. When you don't pray, you are actually committing a sin. So let's go back and prayer. The Bible says that Jesus said, when you pray. He didn't say if you pray. He said when. So the question is, when was the last time you pray fervently? When was the last time that you just, God, this between this time and this, I am just committing my life to you and prayer. Let's not play in this joke, joke, because Jesus is coming soon. Jesus is coming soon. Like pastor says, some people will be shocked. They will be very shocked. You are here at church every day. You're putting on a smile. You're saying hello. You, 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 you are holier than the Holy Spirit himself sometimes. <laughs> you walk in here, oh, dignify. Hallelujah, my sister, my brother. God has been so gracious to me. But deep inside of you, you are not walking. The word of God. It is a daily admission of one's weaknesses. It is better in prayer to have a heart. Without words, then words 
without a heart. It is better in prayer to have a heart without words than words without a heart. Last time, let's read it together. It is better in prayer to have. Some of you are not reading. The people in the back, they're not reading. Let's read it together, the last part. It is better in prayer to have a heart without words than words without a heart. May God bless you. I was privileged to come and stand before you. I'm really humbled. And I'm, I hope that you have heard what God and the Spirit of God is saying to the church. God bless you.